all right welcome back uh, in these videos we're gonna talk about the regulation and diseases associated with the complement problems so which should be the first one to discuss uh, let's start with C uh, C1 esterase inhibitor deficiency before we talk about this let's go back to what C uh, C1 esterase inhibitor does you remember in the classical pathway this was the only one with the C1 you don't want to overstimulate it and therefore you will have something that downregulates it at the same time called C1 esterase inhibitor this one will downregulate so there won't be an overactivation of the C1 pathway if you are deficient in this enzyme you will get a disease called angioneuretic edema don't worry it's nothing to do with nerves so the neuretic part it's an obsolete term what happens is that if it's deficient the pathway will be overstimulated and it will uh, form a lot of anaphylatoxins and remember what the anaphylatoxins did they overstimulate the mast cells so there will be an excess of edema formation through the vasodilatory effect of histamine and serotonin and its contraction retraction of the endothelial cells so the disease is angioneuretic edema let's continue c2 and c4 deficiency they are associated with a syndrome called systemic lupus erythematosus it's not proven completely but as uh, we have seen in many people that have this deficiency they usually have also sle that's why we just say it's associated it's not definite then we have deficiency in mac you remember what mac did they made pores and this causes a fluid imbalance bet between the interior and exterior of the pathogen and therefore it uh, had some osmotic burst or got neutralized somehow so what happens is that we wrote here that uh, it increases risk for nizeral infection you remember probably from microbiology that uh, we have a group of family of bacteria called Neisseria family Neisseria family has two major groups one meningococcal and one gonococcal and deficiency in this enzyme will increase the risk so why specifically these these are gram negative mac is more specialized for gram negative neutralization why because the cell wall in gram negative it's much thinner the pepti peptidoglycan layer it's much thinner so it's more prone to destroy them and Neisseria it's a common infection so a deficiency in mac will uh, might uh, increase risk for gonorrhea or meningitis and here you see some pictures of the three diseases I spoke about. Here you see the angioneuretic edema. You see this kid with <coughs> a very swollen uh, face and uh, cheeks and so on. But what can be dangerous with this disease? Remember that if it obstructs the larynx, it obstructs the airway pathway. So these kids can suffocate and die. All right, uh, let's continue here you will have propertine as we spoke about uh, earlier propertine or also c3 nephritic factor will play a role in one of the glomerul nephritis this one we'll talk about in the nephrology chapter the same with deficiency in or defect in factor h this uh, is associated with hemolytic uremic syndrome this will also be covered in the nephrology chapter but remember, H, H, as you see here, deficiency in H causes a disease that starts with H. Next one, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea. It's a mouthful. What happens here? These are white blood cells, platelets, red blood cells. How do we know that our complement system doesn't attack our cells? We have some type of immunity against them. And this is by a gene that is found in all these three cells. Of course, it can be found in red blood cells, but the premature uh, red blood cells form this through their nucleus. This gene is called PIGA. I think it stands for phosphoinositol or gluco uh, A gene. This one will form 
an anchoring protein called uh, GPI, glycerophosphoinositol. And on this, as you see in this picture here, you will have two factors, CD55 and CD59. Uh, these will continuously downregulate. CD59 will inhibit C9. So 9, 9, you see here? This is how you can remember it. And CD55 will uh, downregulate C3 convertase. So this will cause a defensive mechanism. But in some people, the PIGA gene is defected. So what happens is that now it forms a def defected GPI gene and the anchoring protein will not be as stable as it should be. Therefore, now as soon as something aggravates your complement system, they will start to attack your own blood cells. And let's just look at the name of the disease and let's see what clues we can get. Paroxysmal, what does it mean? It means sudden, nocturnal, it refers to night. Hemoglobinuria, hemoglobin in your urine. But to be honest, all of these are obsolete terms for this specific disease because it's not always sudden, the paroxysmal, because this can occur at any time and it's not just once. Nocturnal, why do they call it nocturnal back in the days? Because what happens when you sleep? You breathe slower. When you breathe slower, what happens? The acidity in your blood increases. And this one, is uh, the acidity is very sensitive to the complement system. So now the complement system gets overactivated. Therefore, they call it nocturnal. But today we found out that it, this occurs in day as well. Hemoglobinuria is not the only thing that happens because, as we said, this PIGA gene is also found in platelets and white blood cells. So we'll find some components of platelets and white blood cells as well. But since we have used this term for so long, we didn't bother to change the name. Okay, next disease, IgA disturbances. The first one we'll talk about is Bercher syndrome, it's a French name, uh, also known as IgA nephropathy. You will see this uh, in the nephrology chapter as well. Uh, this one will go and bind to the mesangium or the glomeruli where the IgA is defected and overstimulates the complement activation. So this will cause um, attack to your own cells and this will lead to proteinuria and hematuria. It's asignificant but you will still find it. The next disease is called Durings disease, but it has another name called Dermatitis herpetiformis. Herpetiformis, uh, since we thought that it was due to herpes virus, but today we know it's not. In this one, it usually affects uh, subcutaneously and GI. This is not so common disease that uh, you will hear about in your exam, so we won't talk about it so much. But Henoxion and Purpura, it's a funny disease with a funny name. What happens here is that this one is aggravated by some uh, viruses. This is a post-viral infection disease in uh, usual cases and it usually occurs in children. In this one you will see that this can cause a vi uh, fever, it can cause uh, enlargement of the lymph nodes, it can cause pain in your joints, polyarthritis, but it's more significant for its purpura. This is what we usually see. Purpura is just bleeding, subcutaneous bleeding that is usually more than three millimeters in diameter. What's, uh, how can you differentiate it from many other purpural diseases is usually, most commonly at least, you will find in the gluteal region if you see a lot of purpura in a child in the gluteal region, HSP should be one of your differential diagnoses. Since we have so much protection against bacteria, bacteria has developed a protection against our immunity. And this is by a protein called M protein. This is found in a common bacteria called Streptococcus pyogenes. It's a group A, uh, according to the classification. This one is blocking and destroying C3 convertase. So it downregulates the complement system and therefore it can help itself to survive. 
And that's about it, about the pathophysiological and pathological aspects of complement system. Thank you.